Let's create a web crawler bot using Java and Selenium. Here's what it will do. It will open up a new Chrome browser, navigate to google.com, search for a specific term, and then print out the auto-completed search result to the console. So first, create a new Java project. I'm going to call it web crawler. Then head over to your palm file and add in the dependencies opening and closing tag. Then you need to go to the Maven repository for Selenium and get the dependency. Paste the dependency in and do a Maven refresh. Then go to your Chrome settings and click About Chrome and check your version number. Then make your way over to this website and click Chrome for Testing Availability Dashboard. Here you can download the latest Chrome driver, and this should match up with your version number of Chrome, this number right here. Click on Stable, then scroll down. You want to get the binary for the Chrome driver and choose your machine. I have a Mac X64, so I'm going to paste that and download. Once you've downloaded it, go ahead and extract it into a folder. If you look in the folder, you'll see the Chrome driver, and that's what we need to reference. Make your way over to the Java project and type system.setProperty. WebDriver.Chrome.Driver is the key, and the value is the path to your Chrome web driver. So for me on Mac, it's slash users slash my username slash documents slash Chrome driver dash Mac dash x64, that's the folder name, slash Chrome driver. And you need to insert your username here. And to hide my specific route, I decided to abstract this out into its own class and method, like so. Next up, we need to instantiate a web driver. So web driver driver equals new Chrome driver. And now I'm going to create a new Java class to execute our code. So I'm going to call it crawler. And our constructor is going to take in a web driver. And we will have one web driver as a field. And in our constructor, we'll just set the web driver equal to the one we pass in. It's going to have one public method, execute. And making our way back over to the main method, let's call a new crawler. We'll pass in the driver and we'll call the execute method. And now we are done with our main method. In our execute method, we'll call webdriver.get and then pass in the URL we wish to navigate to. In our case, it's google.com. I'm going to create a new method called enter search term and pass in what is the meaning of life for our search term. I'm going to have another method called wait five seconds. And one final method, print autocomplete results. At the end, we're going to call webdriver.quit, which will close the browser. Let's fill out our wait five seconds method first. It's simply a thread.sleep surrounded by a try catch. So at this point, if we run it, it should boot up a new browser instance, go to google.com, and then wait five seconds. Great. Okay, to be able to complete the next method, you need to open up a Chrome browser and go to google.com. We need to look in the HTML to see how we can select each element. So go to More Tools, Developer Tools, and select the Elements tab. Click this little selector button, and then click on the search bar. What we find is this HTML element, a text area with a title of Search. I'm going to hit Command F and I'm going to search for text area. Looking on the right hand side, I see that there are seven text areas. So we can't use just text area as our selector. We need something more specific. So we're specifically going to use the attribute of title and look for the value of search. So coming back over to our project, first we want to find a list of web elements and I'm going to call it search bar candidates. We're then going to call webdriver.findElements, and you have to pass in a by. 
So scrolling to the top, let's define our selector, public final static by, and we'll call it text area. And we're going to say by dot tag name, and then pass in text area. And then in our find elements, we're going to pass in that by. This will return a list of potential web element candidates that we might want to click on, but then we need to filter it down. So we're going to call the Java Streams API, filter element.getAttribute, and we're going to search for title. Dot equals search. We want to find the first instance of this, and if we can't find it, we're going to do an or else throw, new illegal state exception, cannot find search bar. In a professional setting, you'll have a custom exception, like an element not found exception. We now have a web element that we can interact with. So we can get attribute, we can get text, we can click, we can send keys, we can get location, get size, we can do a whole bunch of things. In our case, we want to go ahead and send keys, and we're gonna pass in the search term. So if we go ahead and run this, it should be able to open up Google and type in the search term and then wait five seconds. Notice it does say Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. And there you have it, it got to the end. The last thing we want to do is print out the autocomplete results. So if I type in a search term, a bunch of HTML elements then appear on the screen. Using my tool, I can click on one and upon closer inspection, it looks like it's a span, but higher up the tree, it's actually a list item nested within an unordered list. If I do a command F and search for a list item, I get 52 results, which is more than I can see here. But as I scroll down, you realize that the top right hand corner also contains lists. So we want to exclude those. So to do that, let's look in our HTML element for a specific attribute. And I found one right here, data slash ID is equal to autocomplete prediction. So this is what we will use to filter down our results. So at the top, let's create another selector, private final static by autocomplete list element is equal to by dot CSS selector this time. And for now, just copy this. You can see it has the list item as well as the key and the value pair. We'll talk more about how exactly you can define these in a second. For now, just copy it. So let's define a list of web elements. List is equal to webdriver.findElements, and we pass in our selector. I'll go ahead and add a printout statement. And then for each web element that we find, we're gonna print out item.getText. Now, if we run it for the final time, it should boot up Chrome browser, go to google.com, send the keys to the search term, show the auto-completed results, print them to the console, and wait five seconds, which it did. Okay, so we went through that really quickly. Let's debrief and talk about what did we just do. So we added Selenium WebDriver as a Maven dependency in our Java project. We downloaded the Chrome WebDriver matching our current Chrome version that you can see in your settings. We moved the extracted folder to a nice location. We then set our Chrome path referencing that location. And then when we click run, it instantiates a new Chrome driver. And then we use the driver to go do stuff. So in this case, we navigated to Google. We had to physically find the search bar web element in the DOM. We can then manipulate the DOM by, in this case, sending keys to it. We waited five seconds. We found the autocomplete web elements, and then we printed the contents of those to the console. So what did we not do? We didn't handle any login, which you can do with Selenium web drivers. We did not wait dynamically. So we hard coded a wait of five seconds, which it can work for small projects, but that's not going to work for really big projects. So we'll have to learn better ways of waiting dynamically. We did not create a model for the data we gathered. We did not save it to a database. We did not organize our code super well. We just kind of hacked it together. And we didn't really explain how exactly selectors work. 
Okay, so what is automation? Automation is writing code that executes again and again. You can write a bot that gets the top Google search results every day, or you can do testing. So you could write tests for a website that is in development, and the tests would test user functionality to ensure new changes didn't break the existing parts of the application. What is Selenium? Selenium is a web driver. It launches a browser and programmatically clicks and types stuff just like a user would. So you can wait, you can get data from the site, you can move elements around, and a lot more, which we're going to see in the series. Selenium works with Java, C Sharp, Python, JavaScript, Ruby, Perl, PHP. What is a web element? A web element is a Java interface created by the developers over at Selenium. So this is supposed to represent a literal web element like a div, a span, or a list element. And because you're getting an element, you can then do stuff to that element. You can click it, you can send keys, you can clear, get an attribute of that element, and you can ask it, is it enabled, is it selected? You can find specific web elements. And lastly, what is a selector? This is something to help you find a web element. There are multiple ways to find a web element. You can find it by a tag name, like div or span. You can find it by an XPath, basically the XML path in the document, kind of like the folder structure on your computer. You can use a CSS selector, which uses the CSS rules to find an element that CSS itself would use to target an element for styling. Okay, thank you for watching. This was just a quick start guide to get us up and going as quickly as possible. Some of you might already be ready to just move on by yourself, but this series is going to cover a lot more in depth about all the different things you can do with Selenium, web driving, testing, etc. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.